And that's so accurate when it comes to stress. We worry about so many things that don't happen. And if you Hello everyone, this is Dr. West and I'm excited to share with you what I think is the most common factor or common denominator in all healthcare condition and that is stress and some ideas of what you can do about it both naturally, vitamins and supplements, some treatments available, but gosh, stress, is it physical stress? Is it emotional stress? Is it relationship stress, neighbor stress, political stress, weather stress? If you walk outside and you saw a bear, a snake, a tarantula, your body would do some specific things. First of all, it would shut off the blood supply and stuff to the GI system because if you have this fight or flight response and you're running away for some Something, the last thing that you want to do is, oh, I got to go to the bathroom while the bear is chasing me. And so that's why we have so many GI problems from stress. But also, your breathing is going to change, your pupils are going to strict, your blood pressure is going to go up because you have to do something. And your body can't tell the difference between getting chased by a bear or not being able to pay your bills, or if your kids are acting up, or your parents are acting up, or if your neighbor's driving you nuts. All of those different things cause your adrenal glands to rev up, secretal adrenaline and epinephrine, and, and what happens is your body just gets keyed up. Even though people don't always look like this, I always have this visualization of their body going into a protective mode where they curl in and they're trying to figure out what to do with stress. So stress really isn't a disease, it's just a risk factor, amplifies all other disease. I saw a recent report that 43% of people in the United States are showing healthcare problems associated with stress and it accounts for 70 to 90% of doctor visits and it can cost up to $300 billion annually. It's a huge, huge problem. So let's talk about what we can do for stress. So the first thing we can do is you gotta put your body on a schedule. Bodies crave schedule and they crave order. And when you're out of order, that amplifies your stress. And then what happens is the stomach problems come in and the hormones come in. And one of the neatest ways to evaluate hormones is to do something called Raglan's test. Now what Raglan's test is, is it's a really simple procedure. Most doctors don't do it, but it's, it's done in a doctor's office, although you can do it at home if you have a blood pressure cuff. And that is to take your blood pressure lying down. Now in a perfect world, your blood pressure should be 120 over 80 and your pulse rate should be 60 to 80. And then what happens when you stand up, your adrenal gland should immediately tell your heart to beat harder so that the blood doesn't run out of your head and you get lightheaded. And this is so common to see people that have chronic stress problems and chronic fatigue and illness is that their adrenals aren't working right. And so if they sit up too fast or they stand up too fast, they get lightheaded. Now, so what should happen? 120 over 80 lying down. When you stand up, your pulse rate should go up six to 10 beats. This was pioneered by a doctor named Dr. Raglan, who was an endocrinologist or a hormone specialist, said your blood pressure should go up six to 10 beats. So 120 over 80 when you stand up, it should go to 130 over 90. And what's really important is your pulse rate shouldn't change. So if your pulse rate is 60 lying down and you stand up, your pulse rate should be, still be 60. Now what most people do is they have their blood pressure 120 over 80, a pulse rate of 60, and they stand up and it'll go to 116 over 70, and their pulse rate has to compensate, they'll jump to 90. And what happens is that's when you see the blackouts or the fainting or the fatigue. And medically, sometimes we'll call that condition postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is a fancy schmancy way of saying your heart rate is going up too much when you stand up or you stress the body. So stress causes so many different problems with the GI problem, with the hormone problem. I see a huge factor in thyroid conditions because I believe that your adrenal glands get too tired. It can't function or can't keep up with the heart system. And so what happens is it pushes everything over to the thyroid and then the thyroid gets tired and then you have hypothyroidism and then you have a tendency to gain weight and you have a tendency to be lethargic and you just don't feel well. And so you start with the adrenal glands, then you work on the thyroid gland, but it's all stress related. So what can you do about stress? Again, put your body on a system, make sure that you have a good sleeping sanctuary and then the better foods that you eat, the better that you function. The more healthy and alive your food is, the more healthy and alive you are. So you wanna make sure that you limit as much as possible what comes out of a box, a wrapper, or a can. Avoid fast food as much as possible. It doesn't help with your stress management and then your stimulants, your caffeine, your alcohol, your sugar, your chocolate. What your body is trying to figure out is what it can use for a crutch. And if you can help stabilize the body and treat it 
the way that's supposed to be treated, then you'll decrease the needs for those crutches, which helps you to get to the healthy metabolism. It helps with brain function, reducing brain fog, and make it so that you're not an afternoon yawner. Stress. What can you do from a treatment perspective? Yes, there are prescriptions. Yes, there are vitamins, minerals, and different treatments. But I think that's the secondary line of defense. The first line of defense is loving yourself. Now, that kind of sounds funny. I actually am working with a mind-body healer, not so much for physical problems. I just grew up in a real workaholic family, and I have a, a concern that if I'm not working, I'm not in my office doing things, I have a tendency to beat up on myself. And so I started working with it's okay to not always be in the office. He taught me this really interesting exercise called the I am enough, where we talk and you validate yourself. You can stand in front of a mirror, which is a little bit awkward and frankly, really hard to do, and tell yourself that you like yourself. You gotta learn how to communicate. Prayer and meditation are really, really important. Uh, walking, getting connected with nature. And my favorite thing to do for stress management is to journal. It's this an amazing experience where you can get your right side of your brain, your left side of the brain to connect through the corpus callosum. You take your abstract creative and you put it into concrete and you can write out different things. It helps with the sleep patterns and it really helps manage with the stress. I really like the Mark Twain quote that says, I've worried about a lot of things. About 10% of them came true. And that's so accurate when it comes to stress. We worry about so many things that don't happen. And if you journal them and you write them down and you recognize there's so many things that you can't control. I really, really like, there's some books out there called The Biology Belief and The Healing Codes. Wonderful suggestions in those books about how to communicate with yourself how to use self-affirmations to manage stress. I don't think that there's a magic potion or pill. That being said, if your body's out of balance or out of harmony and it doesn't have the vitamin or the right mineral or many times the right herbal connection, what happens is your body can't manage the stress. So you support the adrenals, you test your thyroid, you test your metabolic functions, look at liver function because it's so important in hormonal health, it really helps you to manage stress. Now, if you get your body in order, you put all the right building blocks in there and you're not making any changes in stress, there are some prescriptive medications that I think are really applicable for the right person. Many times, I think we over-prescribe those. So you wanna work with an alternative, integrative, type facility or system where you can get the best of both words and managing stress. If you manage stress, it reduces your risk factor for so many chronic illnesses and chronic diseases and problems. It's the first place to start. Body on a schedule, good food, good air, good water. Communicate with yourself, making sure that you have all of the building blocks, testing your hormone function, getting all of that in harmony, and it's the best way to have long-term health. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you'd like more information, education, or want to work with us, head over to bestmedicaloptions.com. And if you want to help to reach, teach, and heal the world, leave a comment, like, share it with someone that you love. It may seem like an impossible task, but those that are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do.